<laughs> I read an interesting article about Southwest Airlines, about how they do their interviews. And they do an individual interview, and then they put, every, they put people in a group. Okay. And they get them to interact. And they play games, and what they want to see is whether or not you're capable of starting fun, whether or not you can laugh, mm. and whether or not you can engage people. And they probably don't tell you that when they're watching. No, apparently <laughs> not. But I, and a part of this was that I talked to um, a flight attendant, and I asked her, how did you get this job? And she was telling me, I had read about it, and she was telling me, you know, they want to know whether you can interact with people. Now, what a great thing, because, you know, it's funny, they're the low-cost carrier, the most fun. And the best customer service. And the best customer service, <laughs> because you know you're going to get something to eat. Well, that's true. <laughs> and you can't get it any place else. And, you know, they've got their peanuts and their crackers. And, you know, they've always got a joke to tell. And you don't mind the fact that you got on last and you had to get the middle seat. Because there's somebody who's funny and just makes it a good time. And that's really cu great customer service. My idea is to distinguish just customer service from red hot. I mean, red hot is getting your people to go the extra mile and to just love the customer and realize that their next customer will come from you. And I guess if you, we go back to your very first comment, which was find your customer first and then figure out what they want, that kind of solves some of my questions that I asked afterwards. Because if you're really looking at what they want, it, it's a broad range of things. It's not just the pants. It's I want to be left alone. I'm not in a great mood. I just need these stupid pants. I don't want to get out of here because I'd rather be playing tennis or I've got work at home or whatever. I mean, even to say to a customer, so what's on your agenda today? Like, where are you going? Are you shopping, holiday shopping? Have you got your Christmas shopping done? That's what's really going on with me, not have a nice day. Mm -hmm. And so if you humanize the interaction, that makes a difference. And we're very savvy as consumers and human beings. We've been shopping for years. I can still remember as a kid, my mother took me to the only shoe store in town. And I was kind of like a noisy kid, and I used to jump on the furniture. My mother turned around, and I'd be doing the trampoline, and she said, get off the chair. If you aren't a good kid, they'll never, they'll never sell us another pair of shoes, and we can't come in here. <laughs> now, think, think about that now. You know, there's no shortage of shoes. There's no shortage of anything. You know, you think about, where do you get your coffee in the morning? I go to Brugger's. Alice knows me. How you doing, Liz? How was uh, last week? What did you do? You know, and I told her I was coming here this morning. Oh, she says, come by later and tell me how you did. I'll give you a cup of coffee. I mean, <laughs> that's, great. that's the connection with but human beings. But it's sincere, beings. and that's, that's something. Now, when I say that, I, I know you can't be sincere to 50 people in a row in the sense that you care deeply about each and one of every one of them. Maybe you do in some way care about people, but there's this problem that we have. Let's say you're at a supermarket and you're the cashier. There's six people in line. They're all waiting. I, that probably won't happen at some of our stores anymore. OK, let's say there's two or three people in line, but they have a lot of groceries. And so it's just we just have to wait. Well, every person they come up to, they have to say hello to. And you want them to be sincere, but you can't have them express their their frustration either. So it's, it's really tricky trying to be sincere without overdoing it. Well, if I'm thinking about that, I, I volunteer at the uh, Honest Weight Food Co-op. Oh, beautiful. And I bag groceries. Uh -huh. And I do that just to get a sense of customer service. So when somebody comes through, I look at what they've got and I go, wow, what are you cooking with that? What, what is that vegetable there? I've never seen that. Now, a cashier could say that. A cashier could say, are you having a party? Gee, that looks great. Oh, I love that pie you just bought. And oh, you know, I, I, those apples over there, I made the best applesauce. That takes one minute, and all it takes is for the, the salesperson to be observant of the customer. You know, you don't have to be a genius for that, but you do have to sort of be outside of yourself and realize that, first of all, not all customers are right. But if you want to customer, you've got to make them right. Simple as that. That's a good point. And so all it takes is, you know, you know, great colors you're wearing today. And women appreciate that. I mean, or what kind of perfume are you wearing? I'll never forget going in to buy furniture. And the salesman said to me, gee, that's great perfume you have on. And I thought, 
oh, okay, you know, what, what kind of sales trickery is this? Right, what, do you, and, what are they looking for? Yeah, and the next thing he said to me, you know, my wife would love that smell, and her birthday's coming up. Could you tell me what that is? Now I you're thought, disarmed. Now you're okay. Oh, what a great, now I thought to myself, if that's a piece of customer service, that's like the best that I've seen in a long time. Because there's the interaction, there's the connection, and then that whole thing about sort of a sexual comment is all gone. Right. And, and that's, I guess that's what I was getting at. Yes. You can't train parrots. You really need to train people to be people. But they have to have these social skills. And, and sometimes that's the most difficult thing, isn't it, to, to, to develop, especially where you have a repetitive task. People come too quickly. And you, you're using high school, college students, and things like that. Well, if you're going to train salespeople, you have to get them to understand what they're doing, first of all. You know, that it's really a customer service is about having a customer and giving them what they want. Now, how will you know that? Part of by, is by making a really good connection with the customer and then teaching people what are connections? How do you make connections? And talking about what they're wearing, you know, what they're purchasing, you know, what the weather looks like outside, you know, what is the time of year? You know, is it snowing? Is it raining? Do you ski? And this is sort of getting outside of yourself. And some people are very good at that, naturally. Mm -hmm. And other people just need sort of like a script. They need to be able to look at somebody and say, okay, let's talk about what you see. What does that mean? How do you make a connection? And that's how you take, I think, a good salesperson and turn them into a great person who, is, who has power and influence with another human being. I think businesses often think what differentiates them is their products. Products don't differentiate you anymore. You, you and I spoke about that. If you can't find it in a store, you can go to eBay. So saying to a customer, I've only got one left, and if you don't buy it today, there'll never be another. I hate the time pressure. Uh, well, the only time that happens is when you line up at Best Buy at 3 o'clock in the morning on Black Friday. Other than that, you know that it'll be there again. You'll find it on eBay. It'll be 50% off. Someplace. That was 40 years ago when we didn't have merchandise and things were expensive. Now it's all changed. Things are not expensive. There's plenty of merchandise and we've probably all shopped. It's not like you don't know how to shop. It's not like you've never been to a supermarket. You know, we know how to shop. So it's important to understand the consumer knows that. She doesn't need you to drag her around by her arm. She'll ask you when she needs to know something. But in the meantime, you have to just be astute and understand that she is your connection to your next customer. So a phone call afterward is like number one. You know, I'm so excited that I met you and I I hope you're happy with what you bought. Oh, I just love it. Great. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you in a couple of months and see how it is, particularly if you sell a big ticket item. Yeah, not, not for a can of beans, of no, course. No, not for, you know, like, how was the bread? But you <laughs> bought the car. Right. So, and salespeople don't like to do that. Be, and, you know, not only salespeople, owners. They said, oh, no news is good news. They didn't call us. We're in good shape. Right, right. But the statistics say that 97% of consumers that are unhappy don't do anything. They never complain, never. So let's just say you have a little survey you give out and it says, please rate us from one to 10. And you get all 10s and you say, well, that's good and you put it away. No, you call the customer on the phone and you say, you know, that was a great survey. You said we got all 10s and we're excellent. But I'm wondering. Is there anything we could do better? Is there something we could have done to be an 11? Because we don't want to be 10. Now, that allows the customer to say to you, you know. There was this problem. There was this, like, little thing. Because most customers, like I said, don't want to complain. They don't want to hear from you either. And 97% never complain. They just go away. So if you think about that a non-complaining customer, if you equate that with satisfied, you're in big trouble.